Despite injuries to Jalen Brunson that kept him out for the entire second quarter, OG Ananobi went down with a hamstring injury, and that affected things for uh, the New York Knickerbockers. But here they are, holding serve on their home court in the Indiana Pacers are looking for answers. As you look at the way the game was called, Rick Carlisle doesn't have a as much of an issue with the fouls that were called uh, as it was 17 to 14 Pacers with three more fouls called than mm -hmm. on them than the Knicks. The free throw discrepancy was 22 to 17. Knicks had that advantage there. But for Rick Carlisle, it's more about the ones that weren't called. We uh, we always go through the film and games where it felt like, you know, the whistles weren't balanced and we pull the clips and there's a there's a way you can submit them to the to the MDA office. In the playoffs, when you submit things, the other team sees what you submit. And so there were 29 plays in game one that we thought were clearly called the wrong way. Um, I decided not not to submit them because uh, I just felt like, um, you know, we get a more balanced whistle tonight. Um, it didn't feel that way. A um, couple examples, 508 of the third. You know, the, the whole world knows that Halliburton's got a bad back. And Hart comes up and shoves him in the back. And it's all over Twitter right now because a couple of people, a few people have showed it to me. And J.B. DeRosa is looking right at it. You can see him. He's got, he's got vision of the play. And he shoves Ty right into the corner, and there's no whistle. Right in the back. And so that was, that was shocking. You know, and there, there are many others. But I can promise you that we're going to submit these tonight. New York can get ready. They'll see them too. They did submit those. And according to Brian Windhorst, a whole lot more. It's a whole lot more than those 29 from game one. From what I understand, speaking to people this morning, the Pacers were up all night and they found 49, 49 calls from last night's game that they felt were inappropriately against them. Now, I, watching the game, I didn't feel like it was that way, but like, you know, I'm not, I'm not an expert. So overnight, the Pacers filed the 49 clips and, for good measure, the 29 from game one. And so when people get in and work at the league office today, they're going to find 78 clips having been submitted from the Pacers to the league office about how they feel this, game, this series is being officiated. <laughs> I think the reason the Pacers are doing this is that they think this series is absolutely still in play. It is still in play. It absolutely still is in play. Right now they've been playing at their pace, and the Knicks have shot the living hell out of the ball, and that's not what their marker is. The, the Pacers haven't. The Pacers, by the way, broke that trend. They made 15 three-pointers yeah, in the game, and they, they lost. And they lost, and that's the thing. Is, now, the Pacers don't defend. That's that's part of this. But they're fully capable of putting up 120 a game regularly. I don't believe the Knicks are. Now, the Knicks are adjusting, but for everybody wondering about like this, the clips being submitted, this happens regularly. This volume, absolutely freaking not. 78 <laughs> is gigantic, and we can all agree. It has not been a... Oh, this series has been officiated terribly. It has been awful, but it has been awful on both sides yes. of it, too. Because last night, I thought Rick Carlisle, he went over the top with the the Isaiah Hartenstein with the double dribble. Mm -hmm. That was an awful call. It was the wrong call. And but I, th I think he's pissed because of the situation. Because the calls are building up or the lack of calls, or the incorrect yeah. calls, or how the, the series has been officiating, and now you get a ref making a call, right or wrong, that gets over... How often do you get a call overruled? You don't, but at the and same time, point. you had an, an official who had a clear side of it, mm -hmm. and they made it, they they, made they, it they right. right. They got but it right. I think it was his frustrations building yeah. up of the stupidity of it all. But then you have Rick Carlisle going on, sounding a, a, a little bit more petty. I'm always talking to our guys about not making it about the officials. And, but, you know, we, we just, we deserve a fair shot, you know, and, and it's just, uh, it's just not, it's, the, it's just, there's not, there's not a consistent balance and that's disappointing. So, 
Um, give New York credit for the physicality that they're playing with. Um, but, you know, their, their physicality is rewarded and, and ours is penalized just, you know, time after time. And so, um, you know, it's just, I'm just really disappointed. Just really disappointed. The two technicals, you know, I, you, you got you to gotta make a stand for your guys. On, on this, this is not Rick's first rodeo. It's a championship winning coach. Yep. He's going to bat for his guys in public. Rick, and when you hear him pause, he's deciding if he wants the $25,000 or $50,000 fine right there. That's what he's doing. Does he, does, he want to, does he want to throw the Molotov cocktail, or does he just want to just give $25,000 to his favorite charity? Look, I get that this is posturing. He's trying to get more favorable calls yeah. when they go back to Indiana, and they will because that's historically what happens, mm-hmm. right or wrong. But he, the the idea that when he loses his cool, the, the entire team did as well, and they yeah. they just kind of cash their chips in. The New York Knicks play a style that is more aggressive. Mm-hmm. There's more contact through and through. And when he's saying that their physicality is being rewarded and not, ours is not, we're being penalized for it. That to me, I, I'm going. Well. Because you guys aren't a physical basketball, player. and I think that's the thing. You're, they, you're they don't, very, you're very bad defensively. They're, they're finesse, but they're also they don't know how to be physical. Like, and, and it's, that it, won't change. No, and it, and it's not necessarily a shot at them. Like Pascal Siakam's won a title. Like he knows how to be physical, but it's not in their team makeup. It's not in their DNA. Even if even if they got physical, it's going to be something that's looks awkward. The Knicks, everything they do is physical, so it blends in. It, it's the same issue the Nuggets are dealing with right now. I believe the Minnesota Timberwolves are the, and the Knicks are second in this list are the single biggest beneficiaries of the uh, rule changes, so it was, post-All-Star break, because Minnesota is so big and so long, and same with New York, that and they're so physical that it, it's, like you, you can't, it's very NFL in the sense it, of you can't throw a flag every single and play. And that, to me, is, look, people are all over – the NBA's officiating is is horrible and it's wrong. This is every sport. Yeah. If you have one team that is physical on every single play of every single game, they tend to get penalized a lot, whether it's a foul or a flag in, mm-hmm. in football. But when they keep on doing it time after time after that's their it identity. It becomes the norm and you that's can't, who you, they are. Yeah. And then when you try to as a finesse team counter that you're not because it, it looks doesn't look the same. You're reaching outside the box, and that's the big thing here. And that, and it's not that I don't think Indiana's soft. Like I don't think Pascal's soft. I don't think Miles Turner's not soft. All. I don't think Obi Toppin's soft. I don't. TJ McConnell's not soft. Hell, Tyrese Halliburton's not soft. He's out there playing with a back and a freaking hamstring. Like they're, but it's not in their DNA. Like Josh Hart is. You know, he talked about Austin Rivers saying about guys who could play in the NFL. Josh Hart's the kind of guy who loves that. He relishes that contact. He wants to be in that world. He doesn't want to play in open space. He wants to put a shoulder into you. OG Ananobi, my draft profile on him in 2017, you can go back on Twitter a week before the draft. OG Ananobi is the kind of guy that will blow up opposing teams' offenses. He is a wrecking ball. That is who he was coming out of college. He is going to be physical. He's going to maul you. He is a six foot eight brick wall of a human who is going to maul you all game long. Isaiah Hartenstein made it in the NBA because he's got a high IQ and he's physical as hell. Mitchell Robinson took all of Michael's secret stuff and put on 70 pounds from the time that he was drafted till now. Go look at Mitchell Robinson's rookie year, then go look at him now. You tell me that guy's not going to be physical. That whole roster. And then you've got a coach who wants to crush coal into diamonds. That's who they are. And that every bit of that is going to come into that. Carlos got a point. The, offici- the series has been officiated horribly. Mark Davis has had his head up his backside more times but than I could count already. It makes it damn near impossible to officiate it like a normal game. Yes, especially come to playoffs where they're already putting their whistles in their mouth. Right.